G'day, I'm Glenn and my partner and I have been travelling on the road for the last two and a half years and we recently fitted out this Land Rover Series 3 behind me to be our new full-time adventure vehicle. Today I'll be going over our entire 12 volt electrical system and how we basically manage to stay powered on the road full-time. Starting at the back, we've got all the way at the back underneath the couch there is our 120 amp hour lithium battery. Basically that's responsible for charging absolutely everything. Thankfully in a setup like this it's super duper simple and I think often it can be overcomplicated, particularly if you do have quite a small setup. All we're really powering is LED lights, our tap for outside, our Sirocco fan, our fridge, and then also our power sockets up the front. So it's really not a whole lot of power that we require. So 120 amp hour on a lithium battery is more than enough. There's no point in overcomplicating it than that. Basically, you've got two options. You've got something you can go a cheap option, so you can buy the cheap product that makes up your electrical system, or you can spend the money on something higher quality. The negatives of the cheap option is you've got a higher probability that that thing will have a fault in it of some kind. Don't get me wrong, I know people that have bought cheap stuff and they've worked just fine and swear by them, but I know that you have a higher chance of that product being faulty. So then what do you do? You're living on the road, you're relying on your electrical system, and then you've got to talk to the company you bought it from, you basically don't have power anymore and then you've got to figure out how to return it get a replacement one and make it work more often than not super fiddly really annoying and you'll be without power for who knows how long not only that is you really just don't know the longevity of that product now for us our original plan was 12 months in our previous build and that just kept going and going and going so now we figure we might as well be buying for the long term so we think we're buying high quality we know the chance of there being a fault is slim to none and we're thinking long, long term. We want this to be our adventure vehicle for the foreseeable future. Even if we change things to our setup, we know that our electrical system will remain the same and still be super high quality and work for us no matter what. So we decided to get our entire system by Red Arc. Behind the driver's seat here, we've got our Manager 30 by Red Arc. So that way it is our solar regulator. It's also our alternator. And you could also plug in main power to be able to charge it up. So, you know, if you're at a powered caravan site, which we don't really do a whole lot, or for whatever reason, you've ended up struggling to get enough power and you're able to just plug into a, a power outlet at someone's home. This is basically the brains of it all. And that's basically where I'm gonna leave it. I'm not the smartest dude when it comes to electrics, but essentially this is the thing that controls absolutely everything in how much power's coming in, how much power's going out, and make sure that you're not gonna deplete your battery too much. In the middle behind the center console there is essentially how we get to check the status of the battery and the charging aspects of our entire system. So all that is is plugged into the Manager 30. We get to check all the different levels of how our starter battery is in the front, how our secondary battery is in the back, how much power we're taking, how much power we're bringing in from our solar or from our starter battery. And we can just keep on top to make sure that everything's in tip top shape when it comes to our whole system. Behind the passenger seat, we have our inverter. Now we've gone with a thousand watt inverter. Even then, that's more than enough. We'd be fine still with a 750 watt inverter, I'm sure, but we just erred on the side of caution in case there are any upgrades we wanna make or if we have something that draws a little bit more power than we anticipated, we don't need to completely swap our inverter. Our previous system had a pretty high quality 600 watt inverter and it was more than enough for charging cameras, phones, laptops, etc. The only thing was it tipped the scales when it came to if we wanted a blender of some kind. So we thought we might as well go with the 1000 watt one, safe as houses. For the socket placement themselves that the inverter ends up powering, we've just put it behind the driver's seat there. The main reason for that, and we definitely learnt this from our previous build, was the ease of access from both being in the front and being in the back. Quite often it's really handy charging stuff when you're driving or if you're charging phones when you're driving and you still need to use them in the front or speakers or anything like that. It actually is really handy to have it quite close to the front. But at the same time, when we are in the back, it's still any charging cord can basically reach all corners of the back while still being plugged in there. It means we don't need to clutter up the face fronts of the cabinetry or the countertops themselves. We just have a nice little nook that that just lives. We've kept the power cord nice and short and it's really centrally located. Also behind this seat is where we keep our Anderson plug. So this is where we end up plugging in our solar. So you might have noticed in previous videos we don't have any solar on the roof. Depending on how we go over the next few months, we may in fact put some on the front here, which is why we've kept a bit of an open space. But at the same time, we wanted to see how the system went without it. So far, I'm beyond impressed. We have a 300 watt Red Arc solar blanket that's super duper handy. 
but I've actually been shocked at how little we've had to use it when we have been driving. And then if the sun's out, whack it out for an hour or two and it just juices the battery right back up again. The biggest reason we wanted to go with Red Arc was, as I said earlier, removing that like probability of a faulty product, heartiness of the product and overall longevity. But on top of that, it's exceeded expectations of how efficient and well managed this entire system is. Everything works so incredibly well. It's made me realize that while we had similar sort of attributes in our previous system, it definitely wasn't managing this whole system anywhere near as efficiently as this one is. As I said, I'm no expert in the matter, but I hope this really helps with a lot of people that are similar to me, that you've done your research, but there's only so much you can do before going down the deepest, darkest wormholes of becoming a Sparky yourself, and just trusting in high quality products that stand the test of time and do exactly what they're supposed to do. And I couldn't be more impressed with the Red Arc system so far. If you need any information about specific products, I've put all the links to all the products that we've used in our system down the bottom in the description. If you've got any questions at all, please let me know. And I hope this video was helpful for you.